All right, we're going to do it this way because uh, I'm having a hell of a time with my screen recorder here. It just does not want to work. So this is a just a quick case study on a John Deere 5075E with a 3695-05 code, which basically just comes out to the customer's complaint of the regen switch, the backlight LED was not functioning. So let's switch this over here. So right here, here's our regen switch. Their concern was with the backlighting for here. Now there's also an icon here and an icon behind this spoke that illuminate depending on switch position. And those were functioning during key on uh, self-check. Those two lights as well as the two backlights should all function. So, not super concerned with it, all that nonsense, but what the customer wants is what the customer wants. So we have our 369505 with 17 active counts. Uh, then our 369605 with two stored counts. This one's going to take precedence over this one. All this, they had all sorts of wires and nonsense taken out while they were testing, so while I, I cleared those and then while I was getting everything set up, I had the tech put all the old components back in, except for uh, the diode harness that comes with the machine, uh, or that was installed in the machine per technical. Uh, they had a problem with flyback voltage damaging the LEDs in the switch, so we left that in. So I cleared it out, 369505 was the only one to come back. That is low current or circuit open at inhibit switch. So there's your, there's your testing. Test switch. Verify codes. Back, forth, back, forth. Not great. Here's our schematic. So we got 12 volts in, we got a ground, and we got here. Here's our status. So the LEDs get their power here. So this ECU's got to be grounding it, right? So, then we have our switch positions here. This is how the ECU is going to figure out what status this is and whether or not to ground the LEDs. So, what's the easiest way to do this? Data PIDs. Uh, scan data confirmed that these two PIDs, which were available, were changing correctly with switch position. Yet, here and here, we had no LED illumination. So next easiest step, manually ground each one of these, functional. So, where do we go from there? Well, we got our six wire connector here, 5338, 5339. We back probed there, we had 12 volts available. So we had 12 volts coming through here, all the way to the back side of this switch. So let's look at the, it's just another shot of that. And if we follow our wiring through the harness here, it actually ends up coming to this main bulkhead connector. And you'll see we have 5338 and 5339. So what we ended up finding was on pin 20 that we had an intermittent connection here with a barrel. And on pin 21, we had nothing. We had 12, or I should say we had 12 volts. So we followed all that through, and just real quick to explain the intermittent connection, uses Deutsch barrels like this, and we were using the Taxone tools, and he was using spoon probes, which uh, if you guys have ever seen them, they're basically a half round probe, different sizes, it slides along the backside, and basically is supposed to fit these. Problem with using spoon probes on a terminal like this, is you can actually catch this little collar here and if it's not fully locked into the connector you'll force it into the connector you'll hear and feel the click which is what we had in this case it'll see and then you'll spend hours chasing yourself if you don't realize it that's why i prefer for stuff like this where it's intermittent or you're you're trying to verify pin integrity and all uh super thin back probe like uh, the ase wave micro probes or pierce on either side of the connector. 
That way you're not disturbing it and temporarily fixing a problem. It's just not good. Yeah, these little guys here. So anyway, we went through and went all the way back. You know, followed it through, followed it through, followed it through. There's about four connectors along each one of these wires. And we found that we had no ground signal at the ECU at all, despite the fact that it was being requested. So we threw an ECU in it. Boom, done, good to go. So, I mean, this was just a, I really wish I could have taken video, but it was more teach the tech and walk him through using his tools. But, uh, you know, 369505 just ended up being based off of, you know, understanding circuit design, looking at available data PIDs. I mean, we confirmed power, we confirmed ground, we confirmed operation at LEDs right at the switch. Didn't have to bother to test these because scan data gave us what we needed. Reasoned out the ECU was ground in these. And then checked it right at the ECU. I mean, we did have the, uh, the pin fitment issue here. And then down here at the ECU, we found a burned out low side driver. So just all in all, it took about an hour with me walking him through it. But when you have terrible information that just tells you, you know, check switch, replace switch. If it doesn't work, replace ECU, replace this, replace... Take the time, reason out what you know you have, what you don't have. Try to figure out your theory of operation. You know, there's some givens, like if you got power, you got a load, you need a ground. So that's got to be your ground. And yeah, I mean, you can reason out a lot of stuff, even if your service information is lacking. So hopefully that's helpful and hopefully I'll be able to get a video next time I do one of them.